Hello, fellow systematic geekologists. Welcome to a special episode of Systematic Geekology. You could even call this a special theology beer camp happy hour. That's right. You're in this episode. You're going to hear some of your favorite priests to the geeks share how much they love theology beer camp and how even at that space, in that place, was some moments when we met each other for the first time face to face yeah we've hung out on the internet we've done podcasts together we bonded over the big questions and those things that we love in pop culture and fandom and uh, uh, but it was at Theology Beer Camp that we were able to hang out together in person and have a couple drinks with each other and get to know each other better Um, we all love Theology Beer Camp Trip Fuller's been doing this camp for a long time. It's almost like um, Homebrew Christianity Con, where all the people that he interviews and the theologians and the academics come together in one place and we all hang out and wrestle with the big questions and explore theology and all that stuff together. And uh, we hope that you can be a part of it in October, October 17th to the 19th in Denver, Colorado. Um, yeah, there's a geek stage. We've been a part of Theology Beer Camp and a geek stage for a number of years, and it's growing. And we hope that you can come hang out with us. Uh, in this episode, you're going to hear us laughing um, and continuing our friendship with one another and reminiscing of Theology Beer Camps of the past, uh, what we're up to now, and then what we are hoping to do in October with one another. It really is like one big family faith fandom reunion with all of us together and we hope that you can join us there if you enter the promo code geekshire g-e-e-k-s-h-i-r-e all caps uh, then you'll get discounts off the ticket so uh, listen to this episode hear us geek out about it and gush all over this time that we had with one another what we're looking forward to and then we hope that you can be there with us uh, in october in denver colorado enjoy the show i love it um tj might be a little late and by that, I mean, TJ is a little late. He might be a little later and oh, I might I have to pop off a little early. So Ooh. if I do leave a little early, TJ will just have to finish. It's that's his his penance for being late. <laughs> You're popping off early. TJ's finishing it. I can't it's I can't perfect. do this for another hour. You know, <laughs> it's hard. It's like I mean, we don't have to do this for an hour. I don't know how but, long uh, it's going to take us to talk yeah. about <laughs> theology <laughs> beer camp 2024 in Denver, Colorado. I need to leave prematurely as well at six o'clock. <laughs> that's uh, that's that's the what, correct what time. To do that? <laughs> that is when we're supposed to leave. I'm just sitting up and I'm head. just hard as hell at four o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. That's right, dude. And you I'm, know we've right. got Josh who's freaking edging <laughs> us, and Will who's like just right on time, baby. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what TJ was taking TJ so long. I can come up with one idea. <laughs> well, I can tell you what it actually is, but I'm very curious what your idea. Is. I oh, just, beer camp know. and the innuendos. That's really what beer camp is all about. And Cindy was like, "Can I? Can I join you this year?" Up, oh, my lights. Up there. Can I join you? <laughs> you really studio wanna, time? Don't get out of here. Do you, even, do you want to judge me even more than you already do? <laughs> it's like, do you really That's want so to funny. ramp up how you see me or less than you see me? I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know. I feel I like Doctor Moro would become a celebrity at beer camp. A hundred percent. Hmm. I, for no I nonsense, think that's what I'm really scared take about. no yeah. shit kind of attitude. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think personally, I feel like my my best and worst has come out at beer camp, and I only <laughs> went to one so far, and, and I I had highs and lows in those two and a half days. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's real talk about how uh, she probably she had to babysit you because uh, she's like he's <laughs> he's just gonna walk into traffic <laughs> like he's so fucking wasted. <laughs> and I was like just. You're not driving to Raleigh tonight, are you? You're like, um, I was thinking about maybe a little bit later if I have a piece of bread. No, you're not. Uh, have a piece of bread. What is that? Gonna- I I, uh, I know how to how to sober up pretty quick. Like it's fine. Oh shoot! And I, I, my, I will I, say, if we're gonna go ahead and talk about like history of beer camp, the way when it was here at, at my church, and then Nick and Joshua went over to my house to let Woody out. <laughs> <laughs> because it was that afternoon i was like welcome to my house and you guys got to meet woody for the first time that was special, special moment. it was very special also, i was very happy yeah i just want to say so, so so many first are like wrapped up in like what we what we're talking about um so so also hey hats off if you're listening on the whole church podcast I, it occurred to me that this is the first time you've heard ryan does or nick polk and that's wild so nick polk will be back in like two weeks because i was like ah this is this is not okay 
how have we not done a Tolkien episode on the whole church podcast? What is wrong with us? <laughs> and we're talking Wesleyan theology, yeah. baby. Yeah, Wesleyan, Tolkien, Mead. Wow. I don't know how I'm going to fit Mead in, but you guys can can rely on me to talk about me. <laughs> I'm ready for it. Oh, oh man. Um. But, yeah. yeah keep but going, like other first, first, like first. I I knew who Ryan was before theology beer camp. That was 2022 when it was at Will's church. And I was so stoked to meet Ryan Dose. And it's so funny because like, like, I feel like this happens a lot in the podcast world where you're like, oh, my God, that's Ryan Dose, host of the Mighty <laughs> Thor podcast. And Ryan's like, dude, I got like five <laughs> listeners. You just happen to be one of them. <laughs> I'm glad that and like, one of you was excited to meet me, but cool. <laughs> what killed me is there was, I forgot who it was, but there was someone at the first theology beer camp that came up to me and was talking about like our interview with her on the whole church podcast. And I was like, I truly do not remember speaking to this lady. <laughs> and I felt so bad. It? I wish I remember. I still don't remember. We're just going to put that on the podcast. Yeah, it's. I mean, maybe she'll listen and then criticize me. Hi, DJ. Come welcome to, to the beer show. camp. We'll forget about you. <laughs> Come to beer camp where people forget about you. That's well, the, the first time Doctor looked me in the face, face to face. We're like, "Hey, buddy!" Gave each other a hug, and then he was like, "Man, your head is rounder than on camera." Well, yeah, that's like, the first time I met Will in person. <laughs> it was. You're like, man, your head is a lot rounder. I was like, what? All right, Charlie. And you're calling me Charlie Brown already right off the bat? Come on. Not, Josh is what's great without a single people. drop of rum. <laughs> Josh is great at meeting Peter. TJ, welcome, TJ. TJ is nice. here. Um, TJ yeah. did not come to that first beer camp, but a little bit later yeah. on. Uh, he we, came to the met. second one, or he came to 2023. I did not make it to 2023. This could be the first time both of us get to be at Theology Beer Camp. Yeah. And 2022 was when I, I met Nick. I actually did not know who Nick was. Um. We were like part of the early group and I was like by myself and I was just like, Will's busy because it's his church and everyone's bugging him. I'm like, I, where is friend? I will meet someone and I will cause him to be my friend somehow. And then here's this bearded fella who's like the nicest person I think I might've ever come across. And he's like, Hey, I like Tolkien. And I'm like, want to talk Silmarillion? And I haven't stopped bugging him since. <laughs> Dude, it makes me so happy because I also had gotten to the church and had, and Will was like, Hey, you can put your stuff, you know, in this room. And then he was doing stuff. And I also was like standing in the corner and also wondering where his friend. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and then Josh met. Will was like the perfect matchmaker. Oh yeah. I think <laughs> you might've introduced us. I think you might've put us together. Will. A pretty good matchmaker. That's, that's like you spirit. both have beards in like Tolkien, right? And we're like, I mean, yeah, but that doesn't I mean we're friends. Immediate besties. <laughs> <laughs> and stuff goes off, and I'm like, yep, yep, you two should be be friends. Well, let, Listen, who if you find another guy, person who connects yeah. with you on Tolkien, um, Universalist theology, and also is a Swifty, <laughs> how much more can you connect? Yeah, yeah it's pretty hard. Well, uh, yeah, well, really, you know, I'm surprised our, our wives let us hang out. Like, I'm surprised they're not more jealous. They're Actually, probably eager to get know. us out. Sorry. Will keeps trying to interject. <laughs> Go Sorry. Will. I'm going to shut up. I'm going to put Will. myself on mute. We're not trying there's, to be there's no, there's hey, no well. outline here for Joshua. <laughs> there's no telling where this is going to go. The outline key. In case that wasn't but, super obvious. Yeah. He brought yeah. us all together. He he put up the beer camp uh, back signal up in, up in the sky and said, let's gather and let's talk about uh, beer camp. Let's talk about what beer camps of past beer camps of present and beer camps of future and and how can you know people get involved let people know kind of how they can sign up and all our uh discount codes and then what's coming up and we can reminisce of of memories of what we experienced in the past at, at beer camps and and then uh, what we're excited about for the next one and and let's just say um that yeah beer camp did not start with us we talk about our first beer camp or the first yeah. beer camp uh trip fuller's been doing this for many many years in the before times before covid before he moved to scotland uh for a decade he's been doing these uh gatherings as he is a uh, pastor and youth pastor at heart um it's like um those who love theology and beer and he does a big lock-in or camp and come together and they have keynotes and they have 
karaoke and they have games and they have connections and all the things you would do at like a summer camp, youth summer camp or whatever. Uh, he kind of plays out. It's, it's trip con. It's, it's homebrew Christianity con. Like if you go to a convention, it's all the people that's been on his podcast in the last you know years and uh, all, and then all his listeners from all over the country, all over the world come together and gather at this convention. So beer camp is uh, homebrew Christianity con. Um, so that's what it's about. Been doing it for a long time. And then we all met together when, when Trip moved to Scotland and then the world changed with COVID and other things. Uh, we we're all kind of in isolation. And I think his uh, listener base and the theology classes he did online spiked because people were looking for that connection and looking for a way to stay connected and learn and grow and how they understand God and theology and asking the big questions. And certainly COVID time was a time we were all asking big, huge questions. And so he leaned into that and provided a space um, for that stuff he's already been doing for a long time, but I think I think he thrived in in kind of making connections and being pastoral and and the teacher and professor that he is when it comes to theology. So with that wrapped up, he moved back to the states, um, and he was like, "I need to do beer camp. It's time to do it again." Looking for a space, the, a space that didn't work out um, uh, for whatever reason. Then he came to me since he lives about an hour down the road from me. Hey, would your church be able to do this? I said, "Well, um, let me think about it for a moment." Okay, I thought about it. let's do it. Um, it took about <laughs> two seconds for me to to do that, and I I, I just I didn't I didn't even ask permission for my church council. I said, hey guys, this is an opportunity. This is what we're doing. This is going to be fun. You're on board? Yes, yes. You still love me as a pastor? You want to keep me around? And they were like, sure. So uh, then we did it, um, and it all worked out uh, again. And then that was a space where it was kind of trying to figure out how to do this again, how to be together again, how to be in a building together again and have these conversations. And um, there are a couple people who were a part of that who are very um, good at organizing and scheduling and staying on task and creating outlines. And we have, uh, <laughs> we have Tidy Co that are helping out with, uh, uh, with the beer camp in 2023 and then um, this year, 2024. So it was cool to kind of be a part of that initial Reemergence of theology beer camp and create a, a cool space for that. But then I'll under, also understand that it moves around the country and in different spaces and it's growing at a larger location in 2023. Uh, that uh, also wasn't the name of that church again. That was um, the oh, venues. Shoot. Venues. Yeah. Such yeah. a cool church. Such cool people. It was super cool. Who, yeah. Super, super great. And then yeah, it's going to be in Denver. And the dates for it in Denver, you guys remind me, I don't have it in front of me. It's October 17th through the 19th. Yeah, wow, and on the 16th there and maybe go. a day yeah. after 20th in Denver, Colorado. And we'll give out our um, discount codes from our podcast all around. But yeah, that's kind of a summary of where it's been, where it was, and, mm -hmm. and what we look forward to. And, and man, some of my fondest memories were for when it was here in Theology Beer Camp uh, at Holy Trinity because of meeting you guys for the first time. Uh, we knew each other online for a while, but being in person, but then coming back together in in 2023 and in Missouri was a super blast because then we like lived in the same house together for a couple of days <laughs> and uh, uh, man goodness we don't want to share all the stories of, of what unfolded yeah. but uh, yeah and we missed Joshua at that time so now Joshua's coming up at the next one and oh, so if you meet Joshua in person now yeah. is your chance you will not be disappointed and he might you throw a Uno reverse card theology philosophy <laughs> talking question at you at any moment so just be prepared I uh, I do want to ask the the house board games might be less fun with Josh there. Ah, uh, oh, he's no. really lucky. He's super You're, lucky. But Josh, lucky you might get to see way too much of Josh Patterson if you come and stay in the same yeah. house. Yeah, walk around you a corner. Oh, just Listen, enough. After Patterson. after me and Josh Patterson talk pirates. I just can't wait to hang out with him in person. Like I feel so much closer. Then I actually got the book. We we talked about so this is on systematic ecology. We talked about pirates of the Caribbean and could Jesus be a pirate in the Caribbean? Um, and then he recommended a book to me. And this is how I forget people. I already forgot the author and the name of the book is like mutiny something. Will sent it to yeah. me before Josh I sent did. You first before Josh and on that and podcast, I was listening, you're like, yeah, I think someone recommended. This book. I was like, it was me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so once once I get the recommendation twice, I'm like, I have to read it. And then I read it 
And then I got Josh to connect me. And actually on Whole Church, we're going to be interviewing the guy at the end of July yeah. who wrote Mutiny because I just need more excuses to talk about pirates. Um, Are you going to talk yeah, about Mutiny? Yeah. I love Josh Patterson. Oh, yeah. We're going to talk about Mutiny and some of the AI and does AI pirate uh, creative arts in church. Um, mm. Find out later in July on Whole Church Podcast. Um, no. So, man, I fact, when did when did it become theology beer camp and not just beer camp? <laughs> We uh, always say beer camp. Y'all ever notice that we always say beer camp and then it's technically theology beer camp. But now on like the social medias, trips change it to just say theology camp. And I'm like, I like how it, even though it says theology camp, I don't know he's who not, does it. Someone changed it to just say theology camp. But we no. still call it beer camp because you know what? Drink up me artists. <laughs> it's code switching. We're, we're code switching the advertisement <laughs> yeah. based on the projected audience. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> um, speaking of projected audience, since this will be on whole church, I, I want to talk some as someone who is more conservative who went. So I, I think a lot of times you hear theology of your camp and you hear who's going to be speaking and it is mostly progressive Christians. And then like you hear beer and you're like, oh, wait a minute, there's going to be a lot of drinking. You don't have to drink to go to beer camp. There are a lot of other options other than just alcoholic beverages. There's even AA meetings. Um, but as someone who went, I... I was honestly, I was really nervous when I first went. I was like, oh, my God, there's going to be people who believe all kinds of stuff that I haven't even heard. And I was prepared to be completely overwhelmed. And I even sat in a lecture where someone suggested maybe we need to call, call God she more often. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, wait a minute. And you know what? I heard her out and I think she might be right. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff that I was like, hey, maybe I'm wrong about. And then there's some stuff that I'm like, I, I think this is wrong. And I told and I talked to people. I was like, hey, listen, I, I see it differently. And they're like, cool, let's talk about that. And they were very kind to me. I mm -hmm. have never been a I've never felt more the outsider in any situation in my life. As you know, I'm a white male. I don't really have to feel like the outsider that often. I did in that situation. And I've also never had a group treat me kinder. So it's kind of like, hey, listen, you don't have to be someone who agrees with every theological point of every speaker that's going to be there. You're still going to be treated nicely. You don't have to drink. And I think it's still a worthwhile experience. Like I was challenged. I grew a lot during that. Um, it was a really fun time. TJ, I'm curious, since we didn't get to like experience our first time at Theology Beer Camp together, what was your first time the next year like? Did you have like, did you feel out of place any or like, were you like, yeah, no, these are my people. I was there to do a couple things, um, mm -hmm. help trip and drink. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I did, you did those things. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's fair. All right. Yeah, I felt right at home. Well, I um, <laughs> yeah, I want to ask you, too, because you said this last year after um, the Missouri experience at the very end when we had that communion service together. Um, they were intentional about who was serving communion. I missed a communion of, service? Like, unreal. unreal. Unity being that those who are serving <laughs> the bread and wine and, and having that kind of sacramental experience with those who are, are on the margins who Jesus identified with and invited into his space to have meals with you. You said a statement of like, I've never felt or correct me if I'm wrong. Did you, did you say something like I've never felt more like the church or the church would never express something. You had some phrase of, of the church or spiritual or uh, sacramental um, experience that you had there. Can you share about that? What you experienced and nope. shared? I, I can share that. I, what I probably said was that it was the most I've ever felt like a church was supposed to be. There you go. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, so, I don't remember most of what I say. That's why <laughs> I like it to hang out with people who write down the things that I say. Yeah. That's, it's really yeah. convenient. You have Joshua creating outlines of things that you said, which is good. But, but I think you're right. This is what the church is and what it should be. And uh, and it gives a beautiful picture. I, I you know, there was a, a news article from the Baptist News Source. Nick, do you remember who did that? It was at Baptist News Today or some something like that. Yeah, some. So I think it's like the may one of the the one of the or the most popular Baptist news outlet. And yeah. the guy, I guess, attended beer camp and wrote and, a glowing review. Glowing. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and was sharing about all that was going on. And then there was one little comment. He said, uh, and there was a geek, geek stage, whatever that was. And then he moved on. We got a mention, <laughs> but I kind of feel the same way, whatever that was. <laughs> That's funny. Hey, we'll talk about we... geek stage later, but I, but I do think, you know, 
to talk about what it is and is for all people, even if you're not necessarily in the speaker's uh, theological lane or identify everything or agree with everything with that particular speaker or group. Mm -hmm. People are there who are curious and they're there. It's a safe space for questions and exploring and uh, a, a space for those who've been disenfranchised and hurt by the church, but still want to connect with people who ask the big questions um, around them. And so they listen to these podcasts on their own, whether taking a walk or walking their dog or in the car or taking trips kind of uh, in their own head. Uh, but then at this space, you get to see people in person and hold hands and give hugs and make connections that you never thought you would. So that's, that's what's going on here. Like you would at, at a summer camp that, meet somebody for the first time and then you end up becoming best friends or a partner on their podcast or something like that. So before we talk about what geek stage is, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to do that. The, uh, the, what do you call it? The Uno reverse card question? Yes. Yes. You are. And I'm going to put everyone on the spot, including someone who's not here, which I love doing. It's great practice. Everyone should do, don't, don't do this unless you know someone well enough that you can get away with it. Christian Ashley loves me and he won't mind me doing this. Um, so Christian, we all, I think everybody here knows Christian or knows of Christian Ashley. He's currently attending a Southern Baptist seminary. Um, <laughs> even if he is okay with drinking, he cannot drink while at that seminary because he signed an agreement. Knowing what we know of Christian, do you think someone like Christian should attend? Not that they could, like everyone's welcome, but should they like, would he get anything out of it? Like he can't drink and he's going to disagree with most of the theology. What would the point? be i think i think he'd get something out of it but i don't think he'd enjoy himself Wait, what do you mean he wouldn't enjoy himself not because of the drinking just i think ah. christian he might enjoy it he might enjoy oh, being the most he different likes being person challenged. in the venue yeah i thought it was so funny when so this was before i came across to nick's side of the line on universalism so i still was like nah some people just burn him forever um <laughs> when I first went to theology beer camp, like that's still where I was at. And oh, it was so funny to me crazy. that like I met Nathan Gilmore at this camp. Yes. And he goes, I'm the most conservative person here. And then proceeds to tell me how he's a universalist. And I'm like, oh man, I don't belong. <laughs> Nathan Gilmore needs to make a return. I, love that guy. Or I'm, I, I don't yeah. get why he's not just like a staple in all these geek stage things. He's got more cred <laughs> than all of us, like maybe excluding Nick, like dudes, no, dudes he's got done the work. Like it's like, he doesn't believe in his own cred. We're calling you out. Nathan Gilmore. Yeah. Well, yeah. Joshua, was, what does that feel like? <laughs> he was on a round table at the, uh, the whole church uh, a couple weeks ago. And then he did share that like, he's been teaching a job yeah. change and had some medical things going on that kind of kept him out of the loop for a while. So he's been yeah. kind of on the with some, with some things, but, yeah. but he's, he's on the upswing and it'd be great to get him there. Nick, I want to know your answer about the Christian Ashley thing. You, you partner with Christian. You've had conversations about fandoms. We, we probably would stereotypically say there's no way he watches that and enjoys that, but does. And, mm -hmm. and even though he has like, definitely, he's not moved by a lot of things. Uh, but um, he, I, I uh, love, I love that, that quick little reference. Beautiful. Thank you. He's not moved by much, but one day I'm going to move him. <laughs> I'm going to make him move. And they, uh, <laughs> but I, you know, what, what would you take? Like Christian coming, he's a teddy bear. He's gentle. He, he is uh, about as loving as a person you can get, even though he's, he's very, he has his way of believing. What would you say how he would feel or be, or be welcomed at the Alex of your kid? Yeah, Christian, I think I've done more podcasts on systematic ecology with him than anybody else. And so me and Christian, and Christian's actually going to come uh, to Nashville and we're going to hang sometime in August. Cool. And so we've become friends. I'm jealous. And, you know, we're That's like awesome. very, you know, pretty much on the opposite spectrum of things. I think <laughs> someone like Christian, is, Christian's a unique individual in that he is firm in his beliefs while also open to conversations being wrong and having friendships with people who don't believe the same things he does or are in the same camp ideologically as him. And so I, I think he would, I think he would go to be camp and I think that he would enjoy the friendship and I think he would probably enjoy, I think he would enjoy the geek stage, no doubt. I think he would probably, I don't think he would like the main stage. I think he would probably be 
more comfortable in like the open and relational stage, which was smaller and more nerdy just Mm. to challenge him. Um, But I don't, I think people who have the same ideas as Christian or in that same camp, if they have the same posture as Christian, I think that they could enjoy friendship and the intellectual challenge. But I don't think most people who go to a Southern Baptist seminaries would enjoy themselves. Right. Yeah. I mean, he can hang out with Joshua who, um, you know, they disagree <laughs> vehemently about the last Jedi. So I think, I think if they can be That's friends true. when it comes to the Most last Jedi, actually, then, then they can be, he, he can be friends with, with anyone, but, uh, yeah, does yeah. what, what you got? What, what I think, so I think I Ryan had a, I'm, I'm probably the person on this uh, call that knows Christian the least. Cause I've only heard him. I've never <laughs> actually done anything in an oh, official capacity what a but shame like, I, for Christian. My version of what Nick said so eloquently and flowery and very like ride the line is you can enjoy this event as long as you don't come into it being a complete turd in the punch bowl. Yes. Like yeah. have a good time, meet good people. <laughs> and guess yeah. what? You're probably going to have a good time. You might stumble upon something you didn't think previously. It may challenge something that you did, but like just don't be a turd and you're going to have a great time. Man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's sure. not even so, it's not even about fitting in, really. There was no God no. There was a whole one other Pentecostal at, at Beer Camp 2023. <laughs> Same thing in 2022. <laughs> we got two each year. Come on. <laughs> no, 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 get together this year. Yeah. <laughs> this year, I, I don't think three. Aaron's gonna come. Oh man, I think there <laughs> might be a two limit. That Something might happen to one hey. of us. <laughs> Pentecostal. <laughs> So I want to just for a second to, to save, to save us work. Um, Cause TJ and I sometimes aren't good at our jobs being the host of the whole church podcast. So will, could you tell us why all of the people who follow the whole church podcast who are like Calvinist or like grew up Catholic and are freaking out right now, shouldn't freak out that we're going to be a part of this. Uh, then let's throw it to Ryan to talk about what the first geek stage we did was like and what are all these stages about yeah the growth from the geek stage in the youth room at holy trinity lutheran church to a slightly bigger stage stage in missouri and then the next one yeah no you know you're uh, the whole church audience i think if you again like kind of like ryan said uh but a little bit softer if, if you remain curious and open to what god is doing in the world regardless of your own uh, little world or or church, then then I think it's it's a great space, and I, I think come in being curious uh, about what what people how people experience God and the questions that you have. Be more curious about the the questions that people have uh, rather than trying to give people the right answer. Um, and and there are people on on the stages, main stage and other stages, who who definitely have written lots of books and feel like they have some good answers uh, to things. Uh, but but if you if you explore what more about the questions rather than the answers and and do that, um, you're going to have a, have a good time. And, and there's, yeah. And at this place, um, yeah, there's more prog- people that are progressive than conservative, but, or fundamentalist, but, but you have all traditions from, from uh, people who are questioning or atheist or agnostic all the way to like Roman Catholic, uh, to Lutheran, to Methodist, <laughs> to uh, Church of the Bifrost. You know, they, you got lots of lots of things like that. So I don't know if that helped answer your question, but I I think it is for everyone. And if you come in open and curious, you're you're gonna be fine. And I have no idea what, what made Ryan laugh oh, at that. <laughs> I'm just very glad that people who are watching this video cannot see the private chat. That is all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I will only oh, tell you that it started with 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 me asking if more Pentecostals could come if I could bring my own snake. Um, yeah. And that's all you need to know about <laughs> side conversation, guys. It's just bringing up, bringing back the days of AOL instant messenger, baby. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Sweet. Ryan, got mail. tell us what the geek stage is. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, yeah, man. I uh, The geek stage... <laughs> The Geek Stage was an idea for for people to get together. And like I always felt like maybe the point of the Geek Stage was what if um what if I want to relate to these topics in a different way? Because like I, I remember the 
first beer mm. camp I went to was the one we're, we're all kind of talking about as our Genesis moment. Um, yeah, I kind of felt like we were like, we were truly the, the nerdy kids. We were the nerdy kids in the lunchroom where it was like, mm-hmm. hey, anybody else want to come hang out with us? And then in that youth room <laughs> on that on that afternoon, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, my gosh, there are a bunch of people here that want these other conversations. And then this last year uh, in St. Joe, it was like, we can sustain this because people are willing to relate to these topics on different, you know, different wavelengths. And, you know, we don't have to, we don't have to be the smartest people in the building, but I would say we probably had one of the most enthusiastic rooms. We had one of the most talkative rooms, um, which I love that because we, we had scholars and speakers and professors in our room. It wasn't like we were just like, arguing about nerdy you know internet crap the entire time we were having substantive conversations that relate to both the spiritual the pop culture like it it was this beautiful meshing of a lot of different things and i think through the geek stage we got to actually bring up topics that might have been more accessible to people coming for the first time like i I mean all, all of you have met my wife my wife kim has come to the last two Uh, beer camps and she was so incredibly worried that the main stage topics would kind of uh, outkick her coverage we'll put it that way Uh, (laughs) she wouldn't be able to hang she wouldn't be able to swim in those deep waters and i think the geek stage gave her that um like a life preserver to talk about these conversations in uh, just a different way and it was a beautiful thing and our room was i mean i i fell in love with kind of the regulars that we had in our in our room this last time around um, yeah. over the, over the multiple days, we got to see so many familiar faces come through that room and that was awesome. Yeah. yeah. I, there was yeah. two places. I, I there's two places I cried. It was during, at the, in the geek stage was where I cried because I had connected with people. Like you said, those returning people who felt more and more comfortable as the days went by to just share. And we invited people yeah. to do that. And then of course the service, um, with a communion oh service led by Flamey Grant, you know, I mean, but those yeah, are the two Flamey places I cried. Yeah. I yeah, can't wait I, to meet Flamey Grant. And the, the first the time, time I met Trip in person, um, was a, a mutual Lutheran pastor friend of mine who actually Daniel's, um, Daniel Pugh's, um, brothers, best friends with Trip's brother. They grew up in Raleigh and went to the same high school together. And so Trip was moving back to North Carolina and he had this live event. And I was like, cool, I listen to this podcast. I, w- I want to meet this guy or at least go and just sit in the audience and listen to the live thing. Well, it was like a, a snowy, icy day in North Carolina. And when that happens, everybody stops driving. No one goes anywhere. So it was very low attendance. I got to like walk up to Trip and, and Dan was like, hey, dude, I think you and Trip would get along um, because you both like Star Wars. And we kind of locked eyes started talking about star wars and like that stepbrother of mine did we just become best friends and uh yeah. so, so we connected of course theology but also over like star wars and geeky things and then i started sharing some of the stuff i had done in the state with god loves geeks and working at north carolina comic-con and doing panels about finding god in, in comics finding god in pop culture and the culture that pops uh trying to find um uh you know god and in, in the the questions and the philosophical theological questions that we all wrestle with are often in those stories that we geek out on as well, the fandom. So that spiraled into like eventually Trip and I have a relationship talking about that. And then Trip and I over COVID were able to interview Jason Aaron, a uh, famous top tier Mount Rushmore Marvel creators and writers because we were trying to raise money for local comic stores. And so we started talking about, and, and Jason Aaron's a, um, you know, uh, um, outspoken um, uh, atheist and saying, look, I, I am not, I don't believe in God, but yeah, I'm intrigued by the conversations and the questions that revolve around this. And he was exploring that through his Thor book. Well, we started talking about how Tripp and I were both talking about it was one of our favorite stories of all time, <laughs> written by an atheist, by two people, one happened to be a pastor, Tripp's ordained and a theolo- um, uh, an academic theologian. And so, we had a, an amazing conversation with Jason Aaron on his podcast on Hubbard Christianity. Well, then Ryan, at some point yeah. down the road, months, years, <laughs> days, I don't know, tags us in a post and said, hey, you want to listen to a Ooh. good conversation? Why don't you do this? And I just reached out and said, Ryan, thanks for that. Uh, who are you? What do you do? Um, let's chat. And then, <laughs> and then it just snowballed from there. And then from there, <laughs> it, the idea was like Tripp and I thinking about what could happen here at um, – at Theology Beer Camp when it was here at, at Holy Trinity is to 
to have a geek stage to talk about Jason Aaron's run on Thor and which gods are worthy or not. Cause I kind of said to Jason Aaron, I was like, I think what you did in that book is kind of what Trip does in his podcast. He's discerning what gods are worthy or not and what, what gods you should or not put your faith and trust into. And, um, and so that's kind of the genesis of, of then having a geek stage. And then, yeah, it was a small, mighty number. We, we were not the academics or main stage. We didn't have the million dollar uh, or million thousand uh, uh, downloads on our podcast in that little geek room. But, you know, when Diana Butler Bass walks in and talks about she's geeking out on Columbo, we're like, yeah, heck yeah. <laughs> that was gnarly. Yeah. 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 That, that, that was yeah. great. Yeah. We love and, Columbo. And, yeah, you know, so you're kind of like everybody geeks out on something. So let's let's talk about what that is, and then what what are the underlying message behind this thing? So that, and and then last yeah. year uh, was leveled up because we brought some scholars who work in that area, um, uh, Donna Bowman and others. Her husband, same slip in my mind. I just ordered his book on Noel. Lost. Noel, yeah, I cannot wait for his book. I, on Lost. How could you forget Noel? Come on now. I, I, you know, there's a lot of names. I got that guy down here with with the mustache. Oh yeah. Oh man. Um, I, but um, yeah, anyway, oh, I, you go to that. I didn't want to step on right. So it would come to geek stage, but that, that's some of the Genesis there that of no. how we got here and what we're trying no. to do. And like the guy in the news article said about whatever that was, I'm like, yeah, we can feel that too, whatever <laughs> that was, but we're coming together and, and having some pretty cool zesty conversations yeah. around whatever things. that was. I, yeah. I've been, I've been storing up a lot of, a lot of comments that I got to let go. And I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to go mute and let you run. Cook, baby. Cook. Go off, King. Okay, okay. So, so we we do systematic ecology. Uh, me, Will, TJ, sometimes Nick, um, very occasionally Ryan. Unfortunately, he has his own things going on. I understand. I have an upcoming but appearance, though. I have an up- an upcoming appearance. appearance. Right, Josh? Yeah. Is it what? I feel like yes, but I don't remember what it is. My memory oh, is you- garbage. Yeah. What is it? What are we doing? League of Extraordinary Gentlemen is what you asked me to do. What? That's right. I forgot about that. I forgot about that. It's going to be so fun. That's going to be so much fun. Sorry. I I learned that he schedules (laughs) texts in months in advance to be sent to us. So if you get this recording, doesn't it? Yes. If you, oh, if you I have a text that's going out to all of you guys at the end of July that I can't wait for you to get. Dude. I anyway, I learned about that today. The only thing. Okay. Can I? The the only schedule that Josh manages is mine. Okay. He doesn't have time <laughs> to worry true. about his own. He can't remember it. That's true. Christian earlier today was going to do a podcast with TJ at 4.30. And I told Christian, TJ's busy. <laughs> Sorry. It's pretty funny. It, it was pretty entertaining. And I just, I'm glad you don't get mad at me because I do just take these liberties. I'm like, I really think that TJ just forgot and he's okay with me just telling Christian that he's busy. <laughs> All right, Joshua, stored up, stored up, uh, okay. comments. stored up comments. Um, I, a lot of this is really just about like what systematic ecology is and how it spun off of the whole church podcast. But I think it's worth noting some of the stuff. So, so Ryan actually, I think was the one who, who talked about how like sometimes the geek stuff makes it just more accessible. So it's interesting to me. I'm, I'm coming to a point eventually, but let me, let me, let me build to it. Um, we started systematic ecology originally really all it was was that we wanted to think deeper about this geek stuff and i as the person who's like the whole church guy who's like ecumenical stuff and hey can the church actually get along even though there are people who think that we should have communion served by queer people and people who think that queer people shouldn't be in the church and i'm like ah this is hard this is hard this is a hard question this is what we've been wrestling with for years on the whole church podcast it's like how do we have church unity when there's so much disagreement will comes on talks about star wars and it's easy, like not that it's easy, but it's like, man, it's it's a lot easier for me to convince someone like Christian. Again, we're just going to keep using Christian as our conservative go to guy and, and and Nick to come together and talk about Buffy the Vampire Slayer. than it is for me to be like, hey, guys, what if we just talked about theology and got along because we love Jesus? It's easier to hey, we, we love Buffy the Vampire and let's build from there because that's like a low stepping stone. <laughs> And that was like, like for me, a lot of it started as like an ecumenical work that systematic theology became. And then it became more about like, let's actually answer the questions these IPs are asking, right? Because a lot of the times, the stuff that we watch, the stuff that we consume, the comics we read, aren't trying to preach a message to us. A lot of times they're asking us questions about like, what does it mean to be human? What does it mean to be a hero, to be a villain? Who is worthy? 
of Thor's hammer. Like a lot, a lot of the stuff is like questions. So since my theology kind of evolved from me going, hey, ecumenical work into more of like, hey, let's answer these questions. Let's let's actually wrestle with what the IPs are talking about. Not just shove Jesus into it and not just use it as an excuse to get along, but actually address the questions that the pop culture is asking. And then very, very recently, we did an episode on Taylor Swift's newest album. And I, it was really good. It was a great album. TJ's wrong. Um, Sorry, TJ. But we... <laughs> I forgot that TJ has access to the soundboard. Um, we... <laughs> We did this episode and very recently I've been messaging um, someone who's really close to me like, hey, I love this album, too. And I didn't have words for why it connected with me. And then I listened to what you guys talked about. And now I know. And they're telling me all this stuff about like their personal life and like how this is how it connected to me. And here's where my life is right now. And then that leads into questions about Jesus, questions about God. And we're not trying to do a bait and switch. We don't do this because we're like, hey, at the end, we could tell you about Jesus. No, we're trying to actually answer the questions. A lot of times, like Taylor Swift stuff is addressing the human condition, specifically usually around relationships, which is something everyone deals with at some point in their life. Right. Like so having these conversations led to something deeper that was that was more accessible than just, hey, let me tell you the good news of Jesus Christ on the cross. Rather, hey, let me tell you how Taylor Swift's message spoke to me. And what that meant to me as someone who's gone through this stuff with Jesus, I think that kind of bridged this gap and allowed us to have deeper conversations than what we would have been able to have otherwise. Um, so that's like that accessible thing. I think that's what like we're talking about. Like, it's not just going back to like what Ryan said, like, it's not just, hey, we're having geeky fun. Like, it is that. Honestly, it is that. Sometimes it's just fun to tell everybody you're wrong about She-Hulk. But... <laughs> It's also like more than that, because like we're able to open these doors to conversations of like, hey, wait a minute. We really wouldn't be OK with someone treating Kamala Khan the way that a lot of our politics are treating the Islamic community. Right. And how do we address that as Christians? And man, that opens the doors to some really wild and fun conversations. I don't think we can get to otherwise. Which is what okay. Trip has over. been doing with his classes. Like he'll teach, he'll be adjunct at like Elon or, or other places, Luther. And, and he literally teaches like God and pop culture or uh, the apocalyptic genre, not through the lens of like Daniel and Revelation, but we'll use like Walking Dead and um, Battlestar Galactica and other other kind of um, pop culture fandoms that so that it is more accessible and that it lets people's guards down and they don't feel like they have all their identity attached to something. Although my identity is pretty attached to Star Wars when I think about Star Wars, but, or, or you know, Lord of the Rings, it could be that. It could, like, let's just say it's not all like, uh, roses and fun in fandom too. There's a lot of toxic fandom and a lot of gatekeeping when it comes to that kind of stuff too. At Comic Cons, could be pretty clicky just as much as it can any kind of church. And I've learned that walking in those spaces and doing panels and hearing people's conversations and stuff. So, yeah, people are going to people. Humans are going to human. And so, those same things stuff that we wrestle with in church are are happening in, in other kind of subcultures, pop cultures as as well. So anyway. Uh, but that's Trip was already doing that even before you know we we started doing systematic ecology and in theology beer camp they just kind of merged together and we're doing similar stuff and so why not kind of join together and and do some good work together with that so wanted to share that aspect of things too and then Ryan's podcast uh, the Mighty Thor podcast I mean it was spurred like a time in in your yeah. life where you were doing some deconstructing when it came to your your faith and and ministry yeah. and youth ministry and Thor came to you in a time when who's helping you think through all those things. And then to be in this space where that deconstruction is happening, Ryan, how, you know, how does that tie in into you like that in that space? Yeah. We're the kids at the lunch table may not feel as in or as popular as uh, the podcast next to us, but in terms of our place, they are still a safe place. Yeah. So I, so I, I've said this a few times, uh, maybe on the, the systematic stuff I've done um, and other places where like, Thor came to me. I was always a fan of him, like going back to the first movie and the beginning of Jason Aaron's run. But when I left megachurch culture, when I uh, when I failed at being a youth pastor, um, apparently if you ha if you don't hang out with the popular kids at youth group, uh, even when you're the youth pastor, apparently you still <laughs> don't fit in. Uh, so I left, and I needed something to latch on to that kind of stirred my spiritual mind but also helped me kind of 
break it down to nothing. And I thought it was gonna I thought it was gonna be so many other like very like philosophical things or deeply spiritual thing. No, it was a comic book that had come out about 10 years prior. Mm-hmm. And now, thanks to the um thanks to the guidance of one Josh Patterson, who we've already mentioned here, uh mm-hmm. Josh has been teaching me kind of like casually about theopoetics. And I'm really gravitating to something like Theopoetics. And I'm of the opinion that Jason Aaron may be one of the best Theopoetics writers uh, that I've ever read. Um, to talk about, like, he's an atheist, confirmed, firm in his belief, atheist, who writes about spiritual uh, themes, maybe the best that comics has seen. Um, and that really resonated with me. And when you guys interviewed him a long time ago on homebrew. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I don't have to just, you know, uh, consign myself to like, well, I'm a conservative who believes conservatively. I'm a progressive who believes progressively. What if I don't know? And what if I'm okay with not knowing? Mm, like, yeah. what if I don't need to be confirmed in my belief? Uh, and that's where like, you know, Josh is really helping me understand theopoetics and stuff right now. Uh, it's, that's been really helpful, but that's something I, I would not have been able to tell you. I went to five years of Bible college and mm-hmm. never heard the word theopoetics. And thanks to my connections yeah. through beer camp, I know about that. And it now resonates with me as someone who's, you know, about to turn 34 this year, I, I feel more, uh, spiritually stirred than I have mm-hmm. been in the last 20, 25 years of my life. Mm-hmm. So like it, can, it it doesn't have to be either or it can be it can be a third option it can be a different path forward and i think beer camp has helped me discover that path forward um it started with a silly comic book and now it still involves silly comic books but i now have a host of friends that help me forward um and that is incredibly valuable and rare and beer camp is a big part of that yeah yeah man, man I, I love Josh Patterson yeah, Josh Patterson's so yeah. cool. He's going to be on Whole Church soon, too. You know, the first time I met Josh Patterson digitally was uh, to talk about beer with drinks with Tejas. <laughs> and the first yeah. time I met him in real life was at Theology Beer Camp. Mm. Anyone who, every major yeah, I've had was beer is a is a good person. I enjoy that. Yeah. Um, I think you guys did. <laughs> yeah, we did. Hey, I, I want to... Um, so, so, first I want to say... Uh, Ryan's right. That's one of the best comic runs, just period, is uh, Jason Aaron's Thor. And God, it's so good. It's just so freaking good. I, I didn't have I a, such a good, I didn't have as much of a spiritual connection as you did to it. But because of you and Will's conversation um, on some podcast somewhere, I, I did read the comic. I'm going to say this twice so that I can I can bleep it out for whole church people. I did read the, <laughs> the goddamned comics for whole church people. I did read the God explicit comics. <laughs> Oh. Um, I I gotta say, uh, an, an atheist just writing about this time of Cain post the curse before his death, where he just can't so die cool. doing like comic book stuff. Such a fun comic book, and for me, that helped me question inerrancy. That might be a conversation for another day, but uh, I've really I, I haven't quite turned on the anti inerrancy, but I am one of those like I, I think I need to stop using the term inerrancy. I, th- I am at that point where I'm like I feel like it's not honest if I keep using the term, even though I am pretty close to holding it. It just doesn't seem honest to say it anymore. Yeah, you can't and be you can a semi inerrant high view of scripture, even if yeah, you don't do have a very high view of scripture. I that with that word as a part of your own yeah. spiritual identity. So um, you have permission to do yeah. both. But one thing I did want to open the doors into this, because like this is something for me, I wasn't at last year's beer camp and I got so stinking excited. Like I got like butterflies excited, like like my my stomach turned because at the end of beer camp last year, theology beer camp, sorry, um, TJ sends me a text saying, I think I might want to be a Tolkien scholar. And I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, no. <laughs> Hold up. That for me, I don't know why that made me so excited that something that happened at Theology Beer Camp, even though I wasn't there, made TJ think, nah, I, lo- I love this Tolkien stuff. So I, TJ, first, tell me about like what inspired you to send me that text. And then Nick, talk Tolkien for a bit. It wasn't a yeah. scheduled. And then I'm probably going to have to leave. Right. <laughs> no, it was really. <laughs> so is anyone familiar with the theoretical center of the universe? Supermassive black hole. Yeah. 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 
So that is basically Nick and uh, just being around Nick for so many days straight and, and realizing, you know, like getting back into talking about Tolkien. I was like, man, I want to be like this guy so much. <laughs> That's so fair. Like, yeah, I should, I should Nick's color. Cool. It was just overwhelming. I, I got long term sidetracked, which is which is on me. But I, I know I'm I still waiting that. for that for that writing, dude. I want to I want to read it. I want to hear your thoughts on me Tolkien, too. dude. I just love Valorant. Same. Oh, hey, <laughs> this is so random. I, I left this out of my rant earlier, so I'm going to add it in here. So C.S. Lewis. <laughs> Listen, we mentioned Tolkien. It reminded me of C.S. Lewis. Jesus. Um, C.S. Lewis writes, and this is something I really enjoy. He, he talks about like the power of imagination. He says a lot of times before we can change our beliefs, it really isn't like us reasoning our way. It's more like reasoning stands guard and doesn't let new ideas in. But your imagination can kind of sneak past that guard and allow you to explore new ideas. So that's something that, that Lewis writes that I think is really interesting because he talks about the power of story being greater than just the power of reasoning, which is a lot of fun. Also is why I, I think our fandoms can actually let us do a little bit more than just simple theology sometimes. OK, Nick, tell us about Tolkien. Just go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you, you. What you said was really beautiful, Josh. And I'm being a five year old oh on the private chat. <laughs> Nick, and you freaking really, kill me, man. <laughs> and I'm literally just doing it to see Ryan laugh. That's all I'm doing. Oh for. gosh. So, but I agree with Josh about what C.S. Lewis said, and I think that you know, connecting it to Tolkien here is that Tolkien and the Inklings were kind of like an early version of systematic ecology, if you will, mm. um, is that, you know, C.S. Yeah. Lewis was an atheist first and Tolkien, you know, was a very staunch Roman Catholic, but they loved old Norse mythology, classical literature, etc., and writing stories, which led to um, C.S. Lewis converting to a, a sort of like evangelical Anglicanism or something. Um so anyway, uh, or, you know, Tol or something like that, you know, who knows? You can't, it's hard to categorize people, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think with what I hear from people's experiences with Ryan and TJ and Josh um, in particular, just talking about getting connected to people at the LG beer camp and finding this space within our respective, you know, podcast specialties to explore things without shoehorning Christianity or certain ideals into these things, but to allow like the wholeness of our diverse experience come together and inform who we are um, and our friendships and finding people who will like be like, yeah, I am super tangled and don't know what's going on. And I'm trying to figure it out and have a good time with the people that I love and care about. Um, and other people would be like, yeah, same. Um, and I think that's part of why I love Tolkien and have connected this to theology and even done stuff with trip and tried to take some of my own theological experience and bring it into Tolkien is because Tolkien's world is like that, right? You know, CS Lewis, there's a little bit of a Jesus lion in there, um, mm. a little more complex than that, but uh, Tolkien kind of says, yeah, I'm Catholic and my world's Catholic, but you don't need to be a Catholic <laughs> to enjoy it. You know what I mean? So um, Ugh, we're it's kind of similar how Middle Earth can be a playground for creatives. I think beer mm -hmm. camp and our podcast and our friendships can be a sandbox for um, all of us and what we're doing. So yeah. and, yeah. and, and well Trippy is like one of the sacred texts that he reads to his kids and help guides his life and he rereads. He didn't have a lot of time to read a lot of fiction or sci-fi or even, you know, he reads some comics and stuff, but like Lord of the Rings is what he reads and studies and, and dives into to help. It's a narrative that's important to him. So and and Nick, you saying that systematic ecology is just a like a another version of the inklings that's kind of what they are doing just warmed my heart that i'm in the, like the same <laughs> i like i never made that connection before you're right they that's gather good. around a table and they're geeking out on these things they geek out on and that and it's and it's having an impact on how they posture themselves in the world and the stories they tell and the stories they write and how they interact with their students and this is the same way that i do with my ministry and campus ministry students my friends so yeah we just this is my geek alley, just a postmodern inklings oh yeah Damn. 
I do have I, I have something I, I'd like to reveal to the world. Uh, oh. Secretly, though. Secretly. Oh. So this nice. isn't very secret yeah. platform, no. TJ. Yeah, but like Trip's probably not going to listen to this exact part. So I'm going to tell I everyone our secret so. plan. Yes. Eat those okay. words. Okay. Eat those words. So <laughs> uh, secretly, all of us uh, geek stagers have, have been getting super swole. I hope everyone has kept up with their gym routine for the past year. <laughs> yeah, Nick oh. has. Oh, Adam. put those away, Nick. Put those away. So we're going to... The secret is we're going to get so large that even though we're getting a bigger stage, the stage is going to look smaller. So 2025, <laughs> we're going to have an even bigger stage. Are what is this? A stage for ants? <laughs> we're going to have a stage of like bodybuilder doing like lifting things. Bodybuilder geeks. <laughs> the bodybuilder. We're going to break bricks. Oh, man. Yeah, lift that's going to be a... <laughs> We're, well, the, we're gonna walk we're the, the freaking, geeks. Oh, we're I, gonna think we went to the power, power, power team. team in two years. We're gonna be a power team in yeah. two years. Be TJ. We're gonna yes. be a power team. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Oh. Nobody's gonna hey call guys, us. Yeah, yeah, go as ahead. the designated outliner and, and party pooper, I, I know we need to start bringing this in for a landing. We do. So I, I want to hear from you guys before we wrap this up and do our outros, plural. Um, <laughs> what do we expect? for Theology Beer Camp's Geek Stage in 2024, and what do we hope for in the future, other than just all just getting really swole, apparently? <laughs> Tears. Yeah. What? The, yeah. Elaborate. No, yeah. unpack that. Okay. Unpack, no. okay. Be Someone hero. unpack it for him. Someone guess what TJ means by tears. The, the tears is it going to be tear the, gas? Is it like a political event? No. Oh, my God. God. Oh, just. Tear gas. <laughs> it could happen. <laughs> Who knows what's going to happen a year from now? But I, I you know, it's, it's before November, so we don't. We at least we have before the election. But I will say, it runs the gambit of the human experience from emotion, head, heart, soul, your mind, your feelings. Mm -hmm. You don't have to check your brain at the door. You don't have to check your heart at the door. Like all those things come together, and that's exactly what it is. You can bring all your. Every organ you have, Ryan, you can bring to systematic. <laughs> Dang it. I thought you didn't see that. <laughs> no, no. What? This no, is going on I, YouTube, sorry, Ryan. What do you mean? Sorry. It's, it's emotional. It's, uh, it's, it's also um, <sighs> it stimulates your mind and, and what you're thinking. So all that comes together. And, and yes, there's like, this is the best of homebrew Christianity, kind of the people who's been on his um uh, um, it's like, you know, when a band goes on tour, Foo Fighters goes on tour, they're going to play some of their new stuff, but they're always going to play their classics. And so you're going to hear Tripp say some of the same phrases he says on his podcast live in person, but you're also going to have some new guests or people that he met over the last mm. year. And some of the new guests like, um, or people who haven't seen it, theology beer came out, Catherine Keller, Ilio Dilio, man, she's a powerhouse when it comes to faith and science and how they come together. They're part of the process party, but in terms of, uh, mm -hmm. and she's Catholic, and, and an evolving universe can apply to uh, love of Jesus and a, and a triune God. Heck yeah, baby. That's what I'm there yeah. for. I I know this is weird, but like more than the theology, more than like, like, like the big church stuff or even the geek stage, what I'm looking forward to this year and in future years are those moments um, to call back like Will and TJ's conversation earlier where it really feels like church for real. Like, where where the where the marginalized are the ones who are actually administering you know the sacrament or like where like for me I don't know why like a big church moment for me was when Ryan looked at me after I told him about this version of D and D that I invented and said that might be the nerdiest thing anyone has ever said and no <laughs> and one like, has topped it yet <laughs> post common era is the nerdiest thing ever created that was I we should do an episode listeners. about that for the SG one day I will specifically. Not miss it. I, I refuse to not be on that episode because that was some me of about the, the post common era listener. No matter how you're listening to this, when I say <laughs> it was the nerdiest thing, like I, I, I've been around these conversations for a long time and I was stunned at the level of detail and intensity <laughs> Joshua was talking about. And I got done with the conversation. And I'll be honest. I had no freaking idea what he was talking about. None. I leave it. And I was like, well, that was a lot, and uh, I don't really know what to do with it yet. Um, just like most nerdy conversations, but it was on a next level. <laughs> that, that's a teaser for future SG stuff. You know, like, you know what? Even just you know like crazy? meeting Nick, 
Um, and, and for me, just like all the little moments of like truly connecting with other humans that maybe I don't always agree with. That's what church is. And I, that, for me, that's what I'm most excited about this year and going forward. Yeah. Sorry, TJ. Go ahead. Yeah. You, you know what's crazy, Ryan? Yes. It gets worse. <laughs> you, uh, you I see. I would view it as it gets better. Because I, 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 Joshua <laughs> is uh, one of my favorites. You should you should meet our friend. I don't know if he's okay with saying oh. his name publicly, but. Oh, yeah. The three well, of us. You should probably not. <laughs> you should hear us talk. You can come to the off beer camp and see how round my head is. Yeah, me, TJ, and our other best friend definitely had really in-depth conversation about the science of not existing. Yeah. Wow. Will's that, head is exuberantly like round. To be uh, medicated That's and reported true. to a therapist. <laughs> it was. Um, one one thing else? I'll say that I'm excited about for this beer camp and just like land the plane uh, here, Joshua. Like, I love how. This has really formed like a, a weird brotherhood in our house um, because like the we are legitimately the all there to um, facilitate a conversation that, you know, uh, there's people at the open and relational stage. They can facilitate that conversation because it's their area of passion and expertise. And this is a conversation we can facilitate because it's an area of our, you know, so our various expertises and our passion so it's easy for us to connect with people on these things because it just like we don't have to summon it up we don't have to act like it it just is who we are and so if you come to the beer camp geek stage you're going to see that on full display you know you're going to see people like like craig boyd who just did story time <laughs> he read he, he, he read a portion yeah. uh from uh, i believe it was return of the king uh, that was just so good impactful it was it was incredible Donna Bowman. Donna Bowman knows more about how to read pop culture <laughs> than anybody listening to this. She's forgotten more about pop culture than a lot of people know. So yeah. that's like that's the level that we're dealing with. And we get to come together in this weird brotherhood. And then then there's Will standing there like he's leading <laughs> the oldest and weirdest youth group ever, you know, with the four of us. And we're just Perfect. like, yeah, Pastor, I know. We said that weird thing. I mean, you pastor practice. Heart. That's where I started, baby. Oh, I'm always will be. <laughs> well, do you ever feel like that when like all of us get together? It's just like, man, flexing my youth group muscles just listening to right. this weird. When I was youth down in Florida, like Josh like Josh Patterson was down at <laughs> You guys were all been all you 30 something <sighs> kids would have been in my youth group. So that's all yeah. I, I now, see I, that would have been cool. that bus. <laughs> I would have been driving that bus, yelling at y'all to oh, man. shut up. We four laughed. Okay. That's true. No, I, I want to let I want to let Nick have the final word. But before Ooh. I do, I have to have the 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 pre ultimate final word. Um, Penultimate. I yeah, thank you. Um, pre ultimate. I think what's interesting that Ryan made me think of, and, and that's this not like a flex or anything. I think you should attend all stages if you go to Theology Beer Camp twenty twenty four in Denver, Colorado. But a lot of your other stages, a lot of other even times that I've had to speak. You already know what you're going to say. You know where the conversation is going to go. You know what you want it to yeah. be about. A lot of the times at Geek Stage, we have no earthly idea where the conversation is going to go. We're there to just see what happens. And we're just kind of facilitating and letting whatever happens happen. All right, Nick, final words. What are you excited for this year and the years to come? Go. I'm just excited for more friends, more conversations. You know, one of the things that our stages has a unique privilege in doing is facilitating those conversations, not just with our, um, you know, our keynote speakers um, like Craig Boyd and Travis, who did Star Wars and James McGrath. Um, and Awesome talk. But <clears throat> just oh, James. great stuff. But even just but just even passing the microphone to yeah. the crowd. And because we're not dealing with sensitive subjects like did Jesus really raise from the dead historically? You know, um, <laughs> people don't get as pissed off. And so mm, we yeah. can share the microphone <laughs> and I'm a big punk rock guy and getting people involved in the process of creating and enjoying stuff. Like we got to do that and I'm excited for just seeing how that evolves um, mm, through our yeah. different plans. Um, and I'm very excited for that. And, and even just, hang, and also, staying in a house with everyone again will just be amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah that's the back, the, behind the stage. Stuff. It, We're gonna I, have a good time. There's only one thing. There's one thing that I need out of 
Denver beer camp. And it's, I need the ping pong table to be better. I thought he was just going to say we. Yeah. <laughs> no, I need say. a better ping pong table with more room. That's all. All right. That that's a, CJ really need I, more I prefer too. I prefer that need. He does. He does need more room for his ping pong skills. If you're there in person, you can see it. We will not be videoing it for the YouTube page. You have to go in person to see TJ play ping pong and possibly lose to him if you'd like. Yeah. Hey, friends, guess what? You made it to the end. I am super proud of you. You listened to that whole conversation. You laughed with us. You wondered what we were talking about. Uh, if you have any questions about Theology Beer Camp and what it's about and whether you fit in or whether you could be a part of that community, DM us, message us. I guarantee you, uh, you'll have a blast um, at this incredible event. And I'll also share with you a special bonus secret guess what if you made it all the way to the end here and you dm me will professor of geekology rose if you dm me on instagram or facebook or through our systematic geekology account on facebook or instagram if you dm me and made it all the way to the end and tell me that you're going to be in person at theology beer camp i will bring you a free graphic novel I will bring you one of my favorite graphic novels, give it to you in person, free of charge, and just hand it off to you. Yep, that's how bad I want to see you at Theology Beer Camp. So we hope to see you there. Keep geeking out with us. Let us know what you're listening to, what you're geeking out on. And uh, always remember, remember to nerd out with your geek out.